uh, with the subspaces. In fact, a majority of questions in the yellow book where you have to test something in this vector space, actually, you have to test something in the su is a subspace. And when you do that, there are, there's a shorter way to do that, and that's something we're going to discuss with you today. So first, let's just see what the subspace is. Normally, when we have a vector space, when we now we know that when we talk about the vector space, even though even though if I use one symbol for that, like V, I always in my head make the ex ex uh, extension and I think of a quadruple of four objects, the set of vectors itself, two operations on that set, and the field of scalars. Now, if you have such a vector space, so s something which is subject to 10 axioms, the axioms we discussed with you on Thursday, then if you take a subset in this, so if you take a sub-collection of vectors, if you just did pick some sub by, by any rule, you, you pick the sub collection, then this sub collection, sub collection is called subspace, if and only if. I don't know if you heard this abbreviation before. I double F stands for if and only if. I use it very often. I use it very often. So if you take a subset in your vector space, we will call the subset, uh, subset subspace when, if you complete this subset with the other three elements of your quadruple, and you basically you just take them from here, the same plus operation, the same scaling operation, and the same set of scale, uh, uh, field of scalars, if this quadruple on its own is a vector space, is a vector space. If this is the case, then we're going to call this subset subspace. So these three components, they just inherited from the V itself. Uh, in principle, of course, when you claim something as a vector space, you have to test 10 axioms. However, in this, in this particular case, when you test 10 axioms for the quadruple like this, where you just took a smaller subset, but you borrow the rest of the quadruple from the larger vector space, which you know already it is a vector space, in that case, the test is significantly shorter. And this, is te this new test, we actually have a name for it. We call it subspace theorem. And that's the one you're going to use very often in many questions in the yellow book. And that's how it, that's how it sounds. It says a subset of a given vector space is a subspace, again, if and only if, If and only if the following criteria are satisfied, and there are three criteria, not ten axioms anymore, but three criteria. So the, the advantage of using this subspace theorem, it reduces the number of tests you have, to, the number of verifications you have to do down to three criteria, and here they are. First criteria: this subset. It must contain the zero vector, the zero vector which is inherited from the larger vector space. Second one, if you have two elements of the subset, then by adding these two elements, you will end up in the subset again. So we closed on the addition. S is closed on the addition. That's the informal interpretation of this second criterion. And the third criterion, it says for any element of the subset and any scalar from the scalar field, scaling operation brings the vector back to the subset. So in the informal name for this criteria, oops, will be S is closed under scaling. I'm not going to prove the theorem here. It's because basically the proof will be as tedious and as technical uh, as our discussion on Thursday. Basically, we have to just basing on this, uh, assuming that this free criteria is satisfied, assuming this, we have to check 
10 axioms for this smaller subset equipped with these three other elements of the quadruple. Yellow book, I think, does it. On the other hand, it should be very, if you followed closely discussion on Thursday, it should be a relatively easy exercise for everyone in this class. So we're not going to prove this proof right now, but we're going to, I'll show you a few examples where this proof are. In fact, in fact, by the, probably by Thursday, you will realize that every example in a yellow book where you have to test that something is a subspace and you have to do it via the subspace theorem, this theorem, which is on the slide right now, right now in front of you, uh, every example in the yellow book can be classified in two different subclasses of examples, and I will actually address each of the subclasses from the general point of view, and that's, that's what I'm going to do. So.